Red Death. The 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 Red Death had long devastated the country. So fatal. No pestilence had ever been so fatal. Blood. Blood. Was its avatar and its seal. Blood. The scarlet stains upon the body shut the victim out from the aid and the sympathy of his fellows. And the whole seizure, progress, and termination of the disease were incidents of half an hour. But Prince Prospero was happy, 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 happy. dauntless, and sagacious. When his dominions were half depopulated, depopulated, half depopulated. To his presence, a thousand hale and light-hearted fellows from among the knights and dames of his court, and with these retired to one of his crelinated abbeys. This was an extensive and magnificent, magnificent structure, the creation of the prince's own eccentric yet magnificent August taste. A strong and lofty wall, strong and wall, girdled it in with gates of iron. Wall, iron, iron. The courtiers resolved to leave means neither of ingress nor egress. The abbey was amply provisioned. With such precautions, the courtiers might bid defiance to contagion. contagion. The external world could take care of itself. In the meantime, it was folly for evil to think. The prince had provided all the appliances of pleasure. There were buffoons, there were improvisatori, there were ballet dancers, there were musicians, there was beauty, there was wine. All these and security were within. And security were within. Without was the red death. It was toward the close of the fifth or sixth month of his seclusion that the Prince Prospero entertained his thousand friends at a masked ball of the most unusual magnificence. It was a voluptuous scene, that masquerade. It was a gay and magnificent revel. The taste of the prince were peculiar. peculiar. He had a fine, fine eye for color and color and color and, color and effect. He disregarded the decor of mere fashion. His plans were bold and fiery, and his conceptions glowed with barbaric luster. There are some who would have thought him mad. <laughs> his followers felt that he was not. He had directed the embellishments of the seven chambers upon occasion of this great fate. And it was his own guiding taste which had given character to the masqueraders. Be sure they were grotesque. grotesque. They were, were delirious fancies, fancies such as the mad animations. They were much of the beautiful, much of the wanton, much of the bizarre, something of the terrible, and not a little of that which might have excited disgust. Disgust. To and fro in the seven chambers, seven chambers, seven chambers, in fact, a multitude of dreams. To and fro in the and, anon, anon, there strikes the ebony clock which stands in the hall of velvet. For a moment, all is still and all is silent, save the voice of the clock. The dreams are stiff frozen as they stand. But the echoes of the chime die away. A light, half subdued laughter floats after them as they depart. A light, half subdued laughter floats. Music swells, the dreams live, ride to and fro more merrily than ever, taking hue from the many tinted windows. But to the chamber which lies most westwardly of the seven, there are now none of the maskers who venture. For the night is waning away, and there flows a ruddier light through the blood colored panes. And the blackness of the sable drapery appalls, and to him whose foot falls on the sable carpet, there comes from the near clock of ebony a muffled peal more solemnly emphatic than any which reaches their ears who indulge in the more remote gaieties. 
the other apartments. But the other apartments were densely crowded, and in them beat feverishly the heart of life. And the revel went whirlingly on, until at length there commenced the sounding of midnight upon the ebony clock. And then the music ceased. And the evolutions of the waltzers were quieted, and there was an uneasy cessation of all things as before. Now there were twelve strokes to be sounded by the bell of the clock, and thus it happened. Perhaps more thought crept. With more time, into the meditations among those who reveled. And thus, thus, before the last echoes of the last chime had utterly sunk into silence, there, there were individuals in the crowd who became aware of the presence of a masked figure which had arrested the attention of no single individual before. And the rumor of this new presence having spread itself whisperingly around, there arose at length from the whole company a buzz, a murmur of horror and of disgust. Disgust, 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 disgust. In an assembly of phantasms such as I have painted, it may well be supposed that no ordinary appearance could have excited such sensation. In truth, the masquerade license of the night was nearly unlimited. But the figure in question had out-Heroded Herod. Gone beyond the bounds of even the prince's Prince indefinite Crossroad. decorum. There are chords in the heart, 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 heart of the most, most, most reckless, which cannot be touched without emotion. Even with the utterly lost, to whom life and death are equally just, there are matters of which no jest can be made. The whole company, indeed, seemed now deeply to feel that in the costume and bearing of this stranger neither wit nor propriety existed. The figure was tall and gaunt and shrouded from head to foot in the habiliments of the grave. The mask which concealed the visage was made so nearly to resemble the countenance of a stiffened corpse that the closest scrutiny must have difficulty in detecting the cheat. And yet, and yet, and yet, and yet, all this might have been endured, if not approved, by the mad revelers around. But the mummer had gone so far as to assume the type the Red Death. The Red Death. The Red Death. The Red Death. His vesture was dabbled in blood. In blood. And his broad brow with all the features of his face was besprinkled with the scarlet horror. When the eyes of Prince Prospero fell on this spectral image, which, with a slow and solemn movement, and solemn as if more fully to sustain its role, struck to and fro among the waltzers. He was seen to be convulsed. 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 His brow reddened with rage. Who, 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 who dares? He demanded of the courtiers who stood near him. 
Who dares insult us with this blasphemous mockery? Seize him and unmask him. Seize him and unmask him. That we may know whom we have to hang at sunrise from the battlements. These words rang throughout the seven rooms loudly and clearly, for the prince was a bold and robust man. And the music had become hushed at the waving of his hand. It was in the blue room where stood the prince, with a group of pale courtiers by his side. At first, as he spoke, there was a slight rushing movement of this group in the direction of the intruder. But from a certain nameless awe with which the mad assumptions of the mummer had inspired the whole party, there were found none who put forth a hand to seize him. So that, so that, so that, unimpeded, unimpeded, he passed within a yard of the prince's person. And while the vast assembly, as with one impulse, shrank from the centers of the rooms to the walls, he made his way uninterruptedly, but with the same solemn measured step which had distinguished him from the first. Through the blue chamber to the purple, to the purple to the green, to the green to the orange, to this again to the white. Even thence to the violet. Ere a decided movement had been made to arrest him. It was then, however, that the Prince Prospero, maddened with rage and the shame of his own momentary cowardice, cowardice rushed hurriedly through the six chambers. Six chambers. None followed him. He bore aloft a drawn dagger and approached in, in rapid impetuosity to within three or four feet of the retreating figure. When the latter, having attained the extremity of the velvet apartment, turned suddenly and confronted his pursuer, there was a sharp, sharp cry, cry, and the dagger dropped gleaming upon the sable carpet upon which instantly afterward fell prostrate in death Prince Prospero. Then summoning the wild courage of despair, a throng of the revelers at once threw themselves into the black apartment, and seizing the mummer they gasped in unutterable horror at finding the grave cerements and corpse-like mask, untenanted, untenanted by any, tangible, any form. tangible form. And now was acknowledged the presence of the Red Death. He had come like a thief in the night, and one by one dropped the revelers in the blood hued halls of their revel and died each in the despairing posture of the prince's fall. And the life of the ebony clock went out with that of the last of the gay. And darkness and decay and the red death held illimitable dominion over all.